This is such an obvious case. Let the calculator do this. It's going to be so much easier. Now, we could plug points into equations. We could do this a little bit more, just kind of buy the book with our, our strategies, but they're, they're, they're giving us things that we can just plug in. Just do it. There is no reason to think about this in any complicated way. I'll show it to you at the end, but oh my goodness, I just don't think it's worth it. So f of x is equal to uh, 272 times 2 to the x. There we go. There's our, there's our f of x. What do they want? Well, they want h of x, and they tell us exactly what h of x is. So h of x is equal to f of x minus 4. And you can see what happened, right? We shifted the graph. It moved four to the right. Now, that's a little counterintuitive. Some of you think it's going to move to the left because it's minus, but nope, that's not how it works. And now we have proof of that, but that doesn't matter because I need to know which of them gives the equation for that h of x, right? So basically, I have four options. Let's turn off the f of x. I don't want that anymore. I'm just going to try these different things, and I'm just going to leave off the h of x part. Let's do 17 times 2 to the x. Now, that looked perfect, right? Look, watch. It's the same thing. Now it's possible that it kind of diverges somewhere else, but so far this looks good. I would, I, you know, I'm not going to pick that as my answer quite yet. I'm going to try the others, but let's just see. 68 two times two to the x, or times yeah two to the x. Look, it's a completely different thing. So that's not what we're looking for. If we did uh, 272, 272 times uh, 16 to the x, again, not right. It's completely different. And then 272 times eight to the x. Again, completely different. No doubt, no doubt in my mind that it's A, right? And I have to think really hard just to plug it in, do exactly what I was told in the instructions, and we're good to go. Now, the reason I don't want to do this algebraically is watch what happens. In order to follow this instruction, what we need to do is we need to put x minus 4 in for the x in the f of x equation. Now, for some of you, that's already weird, but you need to know how to do that. Basically, anytime we have something in parentheses for this function notation stuff, it is it, it just means follow the instruction. That is what goes in for x. So normally, x went in for x and f of x. Now it's x minus 4. So h of x is going to be 272 times 2 to the x minus 4. But how do we make sense of that? This is where it gets really tricky, and you need to know a lot of different rules for, for how exponents work. And I think this is just very confusing. Basically, you have to recognize that when you have um, two terms with the same base, the two in this case, the same base, uh, and they're being multiplied together, we would add the exponents. So what that means is I could break this thing up to 2 to the x times 2 to the negative 4. So think it, think it back, right? So you gotta, first of all, you got to know the rule, but then also you got to work it backwards, which is hard. But let's try to go from, from what I just gave you to what we started with, right? If I have 2 to the x and 2 to the negative 4, those are two things with the same base. When we multiply them together, we keep the base, the 2, but we add the exponents. So we would take x and negative 4, which are my exponents, and we would add them. What is x plus negative 4? Well, that's just x minus 4, right? But that's weird. That's a really weird way of thinking. It, if you are a human being on this planet that doesn't feel like that is a normal way of thinking, congratulations. You're like most humans. That is very weird. Very few brains are capable of doing that kind of thing seamlessly. Even me, it takes me a second. It's not natural. That's very strange. Now, another strange thing is we have to know how negative exponents work. And in order to use them, what we end up doing is we move the thing in a fraction down. So instead of being 2 to the negative 4, this is 2 to the positive 4. But now that 2 to the positive 4 is in the bottom of a fraction. Where did the fraction come from? Well, it was always there. Because again, if you see math in a certain kind of way, you know there's always fractions and exponents. And whenever you need them, they're just hanging out, ready to go when you need them. And so that's how negative exponents work. Don't worry about why. It's just the rule. Now we can do 2 to the 4th, so 272 times 2 to the x, 2 to the 4th, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So now I can't divide that 2 that's got raised to the x, that's its own little thing, right? So that's 272 divided by 16. I guess we know the answer because we already know what the value is, but 272 divided by 16 is, wait, what did I just do? Oh, 17, oh my gosh, 17 times 2 to the x. I almost, that 17 is such a weird number, I thought that would be wrong. But there it is. So that's what we got. I would never do it that way. I know how to do it. You saw me, but I would never 
ever, ever do it that way, I would do exactly what I showed you. I'd go to Desmos, I'd type it in, I'd let it work itself out. The only other way I could think to do it is maybe there's a way, uh, let's just do it for the sake of learning new things. Maybe there's a way to plug points into equations. If I said X is equal to four, then that means I'm looking for H of four is gonna be the same as F of zero, because four minus four is zero. So F of zero is easy, 272 times two to the zero is 272. So that works. So what I'd be looking for then is to put four into this and see what happens. So 17 times two to the fourth, that's 17 times 16. We already saw that that's 272, so that works. This is 68 times two. That's 130 something, 136 maybe, 68 times two. No, two to the fourth, see? Okay, so that's gonna be way bigger. So that's 68 times 16, so that's huge. That's dead. 272 times 16 to the fourth, uh, that's also really big. And 272 times eight to the fourth, also way bigger than the 272 I needed. But I bet a lot of you are like, wait, what did he just do? Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, I barely knew what I just did. Basically, it's about picking numbers, but you got to keep track of a lot of numbers and know what you're looking for. And so it's a little bit of a pain. But it, it is plug points into equations if you want to do it. That is our main math strategy. But yeah, this is totally a case where Desmos works. So uh, remember, I've said this on other questions on this PSAT is like, just put stuff into Desmos. You never know what it's going to do. This is a great example where it does exactly what we want. We still need to kind of understand what we're looking for, that we want those answer choices to line up perfectly with the H of X that we give it. But, um, you know, I think with just a little bit of practice, like on questions like this, that becomes second nature. This is a question that I would say is much easier than the one before it. This is one where I feel like even if you're not really great at math, because, you know, the tools that we use in the PSAT, you can get this and this is a good use of your time.